Hello, I've been meaning to build one of these for quite some time. A uh, Wimsurst machine, or electrostatic generator. Um, I was getting all the bits together and then I see you get them quite cheap as kits on eBay. So I kind of bought a bit of this one. The original one ran into some problems quite quickly. It started to, the spark was quite good and then it became poorer. Uh, and it tracked it down to the capacitors. These were the Leyden jar style capacitors originally used and they started to break down. You can actually just make out the camera will focus the tracks of where it broke down. So well it's a good idea they've actually painted conductive paint inside and out but the weak point was through where the plastic bolt is fitted into the, the moulding. So I had to come up with some new ideas. Two ideas. I tried making new capacitors, this with uh, conductive foil. Uh, uh, the only thing with this is you get a lot of edges which create corona, which is a, a problem for leakage. The other idea was to coat it with uh, graphite paint. This is the same stuff as they use on cathode ray tubes, this is the coating here, often called Aquadag. Uh, it can be applied from a spray and it is conductive but it's got quite high resistance but at these voltages that's not a problem. So in the end I've kind of opted for a, a kind of joint effort. This has got uh, the aluminium foil on the outside but it has Aquadag coated in the inside uh, and it's in a glass jar uh, and that seems to work reasonably well. Probably know you need to apply a bit of charge to get these started. And actually, here is quite funny. Actually, there you go. You can actually, feel the extra effort you need to put in. So we have this charged and jumping over a centimeter. I have a gadget here. You can actually look at the charge on these two poles. So this is the negative side. It's going by minus 5 kV, which I think is a little bit an underestimate. And this side saying about 11 kV actually when it arcs. So I know they've got a uh, positive side and a negative side, which is quite useful information. These were invented around about 1820, something like that. And I thought the purpose would have been to like these kind of Geisler tubes that the Victorians were very into at the time, but apparently that wasn't the reason for them. So this was probably the main reason for this. This is a Crookes X-ray tube and these are cold cathode X-ray tubes uh, and really rely on a not great vacuum inside. Uh, and I have the reverse generator. I've got to open up the spark gap really much bigger to get the voltage and I've got a Geiger counter underneath it but even at this I'm not actually producing x-rays at the moment. This is a reservoir for regulating gas pressure. I'm trying to reduce the the pressure or rather increase the gas pressure inside the tube so we should get softer x-rays. Okay, I've got improved the gas pressure inside the x-ray tube and we've got a Geiger counter sitting here. The, they should be able to watch the scale here and I can apply the, the Wormhurst generated voltage across the tube. We spotted that basically there was an increase in some x-ray production and there was then a slight flash across the tube where the gas inside actually ionized and that discharged our capacitors sufficiently that the x-rays stopped 